Hello, my name is Dian, and today I'm going to teach you how to make parallel processing on FL Studio. The idea of parallel processing is getting one signal and duplicating it, having effects on the second signal, like compression or distortion, and getting it completely wet. So you would have the first signal completely dry, no effects on it, and the second signal with any effect you want, 100% wet. And then you can mix in these two signals however you want. You may be thinking, how is this useful? Well, usually people do it with drums and compression because when you compress the drums, you lose most of the dynamic range and aspects that it has. And some people want to have a lot of compression, heavy compression with saturation, basically squishing the signal and also keep some of the dynamic aspects that it has before compression. So here is where um, uh, parallel processing comes in. They basically get a first signal with no compression, just a pure signal, pure drums with the dynamic range they want. And the second signal with the drums completely compressed and saturated. And they can basically add in the second signal and mix it with the first signal. So it's acting like a layer on top of it. So you keep the dynamic range of the first signal, the, the drums, and also get the second signal with the comp compressed drums on top of the first signal with the dynamic range and everything you want to keep before compression of the drums. Uh, it may sound a little bit complicated, but once we get to it, maybe you're going to like understand more what it's meant to do. Today I'm going to do a parallel reverb because somebody in a Discord server I'm in wanted to know how to do it. Uh, it's basically the same for everything. It's the same concept. You're just, you know, adding a different effect, but it's the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking and get into the actual tutorial now. Uh, what you're going to have to do first is get your is get your signal. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a 3 times OSC and a simple saw waveform. Like that. So this is going to be my signal for the tutorial. Now, the second step is getting the signal into the mixer channel. The way you do that is you go and do command L if you're on Mac. Uh, if you're on Windows, you do control L. Or you can also do a right click on the channel you want. Remember to have the channel you want the signal to come in selected. So you right click the channel you want the signal to go in, go to channel routing, and then select the first option. And now we have the three times OS linked into the first, uh, the second channel of the mixer. I'm gonna explain what's going on because you're gonna need to understand uh, what's going on because parallel processing on the full city is a little bit complex. So basically, what's going on is three times OS is sending a, is sending a signal into the mixer channel through the second channel. So the second channel is receiving the signal that three times OS is outputting. Now from the second channel. Uh, the signal is that the signal that it's receiving is going to be uh, going into the master channel. And from the master channel, the signal is going to go into your headphones or speakers. So you can visually see this down here, this green arrow and this green uh, cable. This literally means that the second channel of the mixer is plugged into the master channel. This is why you can hear it. If you also see. You can see the volume thing goes uh, on the second channel of the mixer and also on the master. That means it's, the signal is going from the 3 times OS into the second channel and from the second channel into the master and from the master into your speakers or headphones. Now, as I mentioned, this cable is the, is the visual representation that you are having the second channel connected to the master channel. So if I were to click on this arrow right here, I'm unplugging the second channel from the master. So now. The 3 times OS is sending the signal into the second channel, and the second channel is receiving it. But if I were to play it, you're not going to hear anything, because the master channel is the one that's outputting the signal to your headphones or speakers. So right now the signal is going into the mixer, but it's not going out anywhere else. So if I plug it back in, you're going to hear it. For now, we're going to have to unplug the signal from the 3 times OS into the master channel. I'm going to explain why later. So now we're going to have to rename two, two separate channels, uh, the dry and the wet channels. As I explained before, you're going to have a, the first signal 
is going to be completely dry and the second signal is going to be completely wet. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to rename the first channel the dry. Oh god, I don't know how to type. <laughs> and the second channel is going to be the wet one. <laughs> I don't know how to type, dude. It's late. So now that we have our dry and wet channel set, we can go ahead and link the signal that we're receiving from the second channel into both of these. The way you do this is you click down this arrow right here at the end of the um, mixer cha mixer channels and that way just like on the master uh, you're getting the signal into these two channels. So what's going on now is Hitama Soesk is sending a signal to the second channel of the mixer. And from the second channel of the mixer, it is sending it to both the first channel and the second channel. Now, as you can see, if I select the first channel, the signal from the first channel is going into the master. And the same thing happens with the um, wet one. So what's going on is the three times OS, this thing right here, is sending a signal to the second channel of the mixer. And from the second channel of the mixer, the signal is being sent into the first channel of the mixer and also the second one, I mean the third one. And from both of these, the signal is being sent twice into the master channel. So we've essentially duplicated our signal. You might, be, you might get a little bit confused because you see three volumes, but remember that the second channel is not plugged into the master. So you're really getting three signals into the mixer, but only hearing two, because only two are being out, output into the master channel. Now that we have this set up, we can go ahead and apply the last and final step of the parallel processing. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be using reverb or, or parallel reverb because somebody asked how to do it in FL Studio. This is simple. You just go ahead and add a reverb, reverb effect. Again, it doesn't matter which effect you're putting in. It's the same uh, process. It doesn't really change. It, all, the only thing that changes is the effect you're putting in. And you're going to want to put it on the wet channel that we named, not on the dry, remember, the dry has to be completely unaffected, no effects on it, unless you want to have an EQ or something. But the parallel processing you're going to want, the effects you're going to, you're going to want to parallel process, are going to go into the wet channel. So that's why I added the reverb on the wet channel. And uh, now, I don't really use parallel reverb uh, on my tracks, because I use free reverb, and it already has... Uh, a separate dry and wet knob but most plugins don't do this like if I open Serum uh, I'm gonna show you right in a second let me open Serum real quick if you go to FX and add distortion you only get this one knob which is the dry wet knob so if it's all the way to the right it's gonna be 100% wet and if you go to 100% to the left it's gonna be 100% dry maybe as I explained you're gonna want to have like the full dry signal and on top of it, you're going to want to have the wet signal. You can't do this with this knob because if you go here, it's 50% dry, 50% wet. If you go here, it's like 80% wet and 20% dry. And you want to have 100% dry. So you can't have that with one knob. You, you've got to have two knobs like this. But not all plugins have this option. So this is why most some people like doing parallel processing because it basically allows them to get the second uh, wet dry knob on top of the one that they have in the plugin. So I'm going to stop talking. I know it's a lot of uh, theory, but it's necessary so that you understand. Now, what you're going to do is get the dry signal from the reverb or well, on your case, if you only have the knob, you just go all the way to the right. So it so it's 100 percent wet. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to turn off the, the dry and turn up the wet 100%. I say 80, but it really is 100% because uh, all the volumes are, 100, uh, are on 80%. So now what we've created is a wet, completely wet signal and a completely dry signal. So if I were to play this, let me get on the video size. You can hear and you can also see that this signal is dry and this signal is wet. So if I were to turn off the wet signal, you only get the dry signal. And if I were to turn on the wet signal and turn off the dry signal, you only get the wet, si the wet signal. 
So now what we can do is just mix in these two. So let's say you want to have the wet signal prominent, more prominent than the dry one, but you also want to have a little bit of the dry one. You do this. So you can fade in the dry signal and mix it with the wet signal. Now, most of the time you're gonna to want to do the opposite. So say you, you want to have the 100% dry signal and just a little bit of wetness on the on top of the dry signal. So let, let's just do that. Let's just fade out the wet with the knob. And that's it. We have duplicated the signal and applied parallel reverb on our signal. So there you go. I hope that was useful. I hope you uh, learned something and uh, I'll play it on your tracks. Uh, the person that asked me how, well, they didn't ask me, but they asked for help. I hope you got the help you needed. I hope this is what you're looking for. If it isn't, then I don't know, dude. Uh, tell me what it is and I'll see if I can actually get it. I hope it, it was useful and thanks for watching.